What is going on, everybody? Well, welcome to Tai Chi to the People. This is a special episode, though, of Tai Chi to the People. So welcome to Tai Chi to the People uh, from Justice for Hire. And uh, if you don't know what Justice for Hire is, it is a show that we are producing with a community, a global cast. And uh, on top of that, you anyone can join the cast from their phone from justiceforhire.app. So it's a big deal and it's never been done before. And every day we're live editing the show uh, on Twitch and it's a whole thing. Anything you post on the, the app, justiceforhire.app, um, becomes part of the cinematic universe. And then we as a production company, which is called Real World, I'll tell you about that in a second, we pull the content from the app, we select stuff, and then we put it into a show. And that's how we're making a show with a community. It's like Uber for Heroes. The concept of the show is like Uber for Heroes, where you can hire one, hire a hero or become one and get paid. So you can join the cast as a hero or villain or a client that hires heroes or villains from justiceforhire.app. And I'll put a little uh, link to it up here. And the company producing the show is Real World, which is our production company. Uh, more specifically, it's the world's first social film studio. So it's all about making movies and shows with the audience, uh, with a global community. And if you want to see more movies and shows made with communities, whether that's more than just Justice for Hire, but I mean like, you know, fantasy or sci-fi or, or romance or comedy or whatever, whatever it is, uh, then invest in the company. That is like a new opportunity that we have open that anybody can invest in our company from wefunder.com slash R-E-E-L-W-U-R-L-D. That's wefunder.com slash real world. R-E-E-L-W-U-R-L-D because you're in it. And <clears throat> every week uh, I focus on making sure that, that uh, you know, it, these sessions, these Tai Chi sessions are dedicated to the uh, uh, the noble cause of the week for this foreseeable future that noble cause is going to be real world. So check it out. Um, but I will be launching, or I actually just launched my, my uh, Coach Jan's Tai Chi Patreon, which you can also check out at patreon.com slash uh, Jan's Tai Chi. And uh, I'm going to put out the video for that, like the announcement video for it soon. Uh, I still have to do a little bit of editing on that. But um, it's all, a bunch of people on, tic, on uh, YouTube asked me to start a Patreon uh, and for Tai Chi videos so that I can make higher quality, detailed, when I say higher quality, I mean like also more specific detailed, uh, specifically detailed Tai Chi push hands videos and, and Tai Chi videos in general. So um, I, I, have, I have tons of Tai Chi content already coming out, but the folks that are, are coming onto the Tai Chi Patreon uh, know that, that if you become a Tai Chi patron, uh, a, Jan a Janice Tai Chi patron, uh, the video quality is going to increase and you're gonna see very specific, you're going to see the most detailed Tai Chi push hands videos on the planet. I can guarantee you that. So um, this past weekend, what makes this special, this wonderful uh, event that we're doing today, um, uh, the, this event of, of, of uh, Tai Chi to people, as this past weekend was the World Series of Tai Chi push hands, the first World Series of Tai Chi push hands. And with this first World Series of Tai Chi push hands, um, I, I was the head judge and uh, it, was a, it was thrown simultaneously with the World Series of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So we had a bunch of Jiu-Jitsu guys and a, and a handful of Tai Chi folks coming in and playing um, and two different events running simultaneously, two different competitive categories. And the, um, the Tai Chi push hand side of it was done on pedestals. You can watch it right now, it's five hours long. I streamed it, um, you can see it on my channel. And I'll also have new videos coming with really detailed, uh, really beautiful, beautifully shot um, uh, close-ups for each one of those uh, matches. Uh, so that'll come soon. Uh, Jerry Liu was there, Jerry Liu was covering a, a lot of the, uh, the matches and stuff. So really, really great stuff, a huge success. The event was a huge success in Orange County, Laguna Niguel, uh, California, and uh, a really historic uh, of us bridging together the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and Tai Chi community. So I'm, I'm ecstatic to have been a part of it. And uh, I announced to everybody that as the head judge that you get to compete against me at the end. Whoever wins competes against me. And there's two reasons for this. One, because I've been a part of so many Tai Chi competitions where the, the uh, mostly in the U.S., I have to say, the, the majority of the competitions I've done have been in the U.S., but, the one, but when I say this, I mean that the, in, this, in Taiwan, when I've, where I've competed out there, the judges look like they're like ready to compete. The judges look strong, they look focused, they look ready, et cetera. 
in the U.S., my experience, uh, you're blessed or whatever's happening uh, outside, my experience in um, the, the U.S. has been that the Tai Chi practitioners often look out of shape. They look like they, they are, are uh, not, um, not able to truly compete and are also don't look very skilled. And when I say very skilled, and, and some of you, um, you may have been my judges, and some of you uh, may be insulted by this. And it's not my intention to insult. It is my intention to clarify that the sport of Tai Chi push hands, which primarily does not really exist in the United States, it existed for maybe a year in 2010 when I competed at the uh, uh, ICMACs with extreme push hands. So extreme push hands uh, was, a, was, a, was a thing started by Shi Ming Huang, Dr. Shi Ming Huang and Nick Screamo. And Dr. Shi Ming Huang uh, uh, then left, uh, somehow uh, was no longer a part of the, the association. And uh, after that, um, I, Nick Screamo kept the extreme push hands going with different rule sets. I, I, I and expanded rule sets um, to, to make it a little bit more uh, martially viable. But again, I, I've not really seen um, any, any video content showcasing that they actually uh, succeeded in making it martially viable. Did not look like there were, there were strong, mar like really strong non-Tai Chi martial artists competing in this thing that, that made, that really tested the Tai Chi folks. And, uh, and the big thing about the Tai Chi folks is that a lot of times that you hear a lot of philosophy, you hear a lot of a lot of chi concepts and all this other stuff. You hear a lot of Chinese language thrown out by non-Chinese people referencing concepts that are uh, essentially um, uh, still foreign to them, to be quite honest. Like someone says kai or pong, you know, they, they say these things that throw them out and, and they know a little bit of what that actually means, but they don't really have the language. They may not speak Chinese. I mean, if they do, they may not have the, the ability to build the bridge between the languages, because if you don't, if you can't say it, you can't explain it in plain, whatever your actual language is to other people who may not understand, then you don't fully understand it. So like you don't have the grasp of, of, of being able to, 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 to articulate. Articulation is a massive skill. And so um, this is a long winded way of me saying that, that uh, the, the reason I, the two reasons I, one of the two reasons I uh, was head judge uh, and competing against whoever won was one to make sure that to set the precedent, the precedent that any judge at the World Series of push hands is going to compete against the the uh, winner. So, and as we get more organized, this past weekend was not about weight class. We didn't have any weight classes, all unlimited weight class. Um, so, you know, you had, and you actually had a lot of heavier, heavier weights there. I was actually potentially the lightest one. I'm 174 pounds. Um, Nick, uh, uh, Sifu Nick, uh, I, 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 I put in Sifu, uh, he, is, he is a teacher, of course, uh, by, you know, I, I don't call people Sifu unless they're my Sifu, <laughs> you know, um, but uh, 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 Nick Asla, uh, who, who I really, really, really enjoyed his performance. I competed against him at the end as well. He actually beat me 14 to eight. And, um, uh, and I want to talk about that as well. So I'm going to un unpack that here today. Uh, but it was really, really wonderful. It was great to see all these folks get a taste of what um, Tai Chi World Cup style fixed at push hands can do. And it's really, really important, not only because of, of what it can do uh, and what it means for, for the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu community to see the skill sets and then for the, some of the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guys to come on and, and try to test it, realize that they, they can't win in this yet, but they could, it could help them in their game, their, their JITS game. Um, it was a really valuable and wonderful experience. The second reason why I was the judge is because I want to build a new US Tai Chi push hands team. And what that means is that as, as the former captain and coach of the US Tai Chi push hands team, I want new talent. And I want new talent, and the only way I can really find new talent is to test new talent. So I have to test whoever wins. I'm happy to test everybody, but the winner is the one who will relationship in testing, hence testing Nick. And Nick was really, really great. I really enjoyed his uh, performance. Um, 
And, you know, my, my evaluation of like, for me, winning or getting beat is, is like, if this is an exhibition to a certain extent, and it's a test, it's a litmus test for me as, as a recruiter. So I'm looking at this thing. I'm like, okay, cool. I wanted to beat Nick. I felt like, you know, in my moment of competing against him, I was like, huh, I may not have the, um, the, the internal, not, not internal power, like chi, et cetera. Like, I mean, like mechanically from the, from my training, the weeks uh, leading up to it, I'm like, huh, I'm not sure if I can blast this weight, manipulate his weight. Cause he's a uh, 230 pounds and I'm 174. Um, so he's 230 something like, uh, you know, I'm not sure the exact number, um, but I'm about 174. So I'm like, huh, I'm not sure if I can lift this extra 60 pounds or move this extra 60 pounds in this direction for after, uh, you know, I was, I was in the lead for a, a little bit at the beginning, but I wasn't sure if I could actually lift it toward the end. I was like, man, I'm starting to gas out. Um, strategically, I felt like I was, I was, um, um, I felt my mind like uh, not as sharp as it was in the beginning. And so I was like, okay, you know, and then suddenly it was over. I was like, ah, oh, man, like it's, it's okay because this is great. This is exactly what should happen. We want the new talent to, or, or the clear talent to come out on top. We want to identify this clear talent and we want to evaluate. I want to evaluate the talent. So I really, really liked it. And there's a lot of notes that I want to share with Nick as well, because I think there's a lot of opportunity um, as a talent scout myself in all aspects of my, my work and life. Um, you know, I do the same thing in, in, in filmmaking and technology, et cetera. Like I'm always scouting talent for my businesses and um, looking at his, his skill set. I'm like, this is really, really wonderful. Um, there's a lot of stuff that he has and there's a lot of stuff he doesn't have that we have. And when I say we, I mean, we as the U.S. Tai Chi push hands team spent time with amazing thinkers. This is, I cannot stress this enough. You can train Tai Chi for a very long time and you could be very well practiced, but thinking, adapting your Tai Chi to your thinking is, is really, really its own thing. And also having like, Josh Waiskin is a, was a chess prodigy. Okay. Josh was my coach. Josh is a brilliant man. Dan Caulfield is a brilliant man. Like he is, he is, he was Josh's like brother in arms, like right hand training partner. Those, these guys were developing concepts, ideas every few days they were coming up with something new. So, and they were bringing it into the Tai Chi system. So that is not common. That is completely uncommon, especially in Chinese martial arts. And so, especially in Tai Chi. So the entire team was, was built around those two guys. And the type of thinking that happened when you have um, a, a data scientist come on board, Trevor Cohen, um, uh, who's, who's working on building uh, artificial intelligence neural networks, you know, like, uh, and uh, I was just shout out, shout out to my whole, the whole first 2004 team, like, well, they weren't the first team, but like the team that I was first on, my father, Jancy Childress, uh, shout out to, to, to Irving Yi, to Callum, to Callum, uh, Callum Douglas Reed, and to, to Parashard uh, Holm, and, um, and to, 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 to everybody on that team. And then shout out to the 20, 2009, 2010, 2011 team. Um, so the 04, 05 team was the one I was on. And then the, of course I was on the 2009 to 2011 team. And uh, so shout out to Jordan Forth and to uh, whose videos I'm, I'm gonna be posting in a little bit. And uh, uh, one of my former teammates and, and Eric William Johnson and Khan Kazaki, uh, Kanzaki. And, um, you know, they're, they're, I'm giving a shout out to all these folks because thinkers, 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 not just train a move and then execute the move. Uh, it's and not just figure out sensitivity. Thinking means strategy and figuring out how to be Tai Chi in your thinking is its own thing. So when I to bring it back to training with Nick, I see a lot of opportunity here in sharing some of these concepts some on a lot of these concepts, not only with him, but with the entire new US team that we're gonna be building. And that's something that you can't get from training in the US circuit. You have to train with, you have to, you have to compete at the world class, meaning you have to compete in, in, at either Taiwan or Chen Village. And from what I've seen of Chen Village, which I have to go to, I've not been there, uh, so I can't make a true judgment call. But from what I've seen in the videos, um, the, 
it's different. You know, the, 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 there's, there's a lot of hard, quote unquote, hard Tai Chi, which some people would accuse me of. So there's, there's guys who go, oh, it's not as finesse as uh, Tai Chi World Cup in Taiwan, because the Tai Chi World Cup in Taiwan has more limited rule set. And that limited rule set uh, yields a particular type of finesse playing from collarbone on the hip rather than playing with ease and grabs, uh, et cetera, in the Chen village. So, um, and that's not to say that, that, that the finesse moves can't be adapted to there, um, but as Chu Shou Chen, 16-time uh, uh, Tai Chi World Cup champion and, and the son of the, the, the greatest, uh, the, the father of the greatest Tai Chi uh, push hands family in the world, out in, in uh, 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 Shijong Tai Chi College, um, they are they are amazing, and I always shout them out. And they're all friends, and they're great. Um, but if you're not competing against them, uh, you're not going to have the data sets. That's essentially what I'm saying. So, um, and just because you have the data sets like me doesn't necessarily mean that there aren't other variables that come into play when you go up against another competitor. So again, like um, it's important to note that I, I felt I felt great about this past weekend. Um, and I felt great about being able to, my son's only ever seen me win. So I felt great about losing in front of my son, but losing uh, with grace. And we went out to dinner afterward with Nick and uh, with, with Jason Bukic, the promoter. And we had a wonderful time. We had a really, really wonderful time. Um, and, you know, we talked about the future of the, of the, of the World Series League and what it can mean and what it will mean and how we're going to improve the rules and improve the, the setup because we had pedestals, but pedestals are sliding around and moving a little bit. And not to say that that's a bad thing, but it's not as, um, it's not what we wanted. I think it's an interesting thing, but it's not what we wanted. So, and, and it's not, may not help prepare you for the um, worlds, the, the meaning Tai Chi World Cup and Chen Village, where Ch Chen Village has higher pedestals, Tai Chi World Cup has slightly elevated platforms. And we want the best team in the world, the absolute best team on the planet um, to be coming from the US. And that's gonna be interesting because um, and when I say we, you know, I, like, like, I think a lot of us want this. So how are we gonna get there is, is the question. And, um, and we're going to get there by being organized by you wonderful people sharing more about what we're doing at the Tai Chi World Cup. And um, uh, I'm sorry, not Tai Chi World Cup, the uh, World Series Tai Chi Push Hands, Tai Chi Push Hands, because it's spelled differently, T-A-I-J-I, -I, uh, from, from uh, the way Jason made the branding. And I appreciate that. So um, it was a fun time. It was a true success. And I am very interested in working with Jason and working with Nick on, uh, on building this thing out. So it's, and you know, there's, there's, there's more team members to come to. I have some folks that I've, I've reached out to, uh, Jerry Liu as well, of course, obviously he's, he's, he's been a part of, of this as well. Um, I'm very, very excited for the good group of people that we have and the uh, good people that showed up and, you know, Jason, if you watch the video, Jason you know, announced, he's like, anybody to the jujitsu guys, he's like, if any one of you jujitsu guys can push Nick or push Jan, I'll give you an extra 500 bucks. He's like, you put 20 bucks down I'll, and against my 500 and we'll go for it. And so, you know, Nick, after he won, he didn't want to do, you know, smartly enough, he was very intelligent. Like, after you win, you stop. He's like, I stop. <laughs> he's like, I'm good. I don't want to do it. But uh, the jujitsu guy, I was still there. The jujitsu guy's like, okay, well, you know, let, let, let me let me go against Jan. Let me try to get this five hundred bucks. I'm like, all right, let's, let's you know, I want to. I was exhausted. It was how I, I didn't get much sleep or much, and uh, had a bunch of like nutrition, um, uh, self-imposed nutritional. Uh, uh, my 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 eating was not optimized leading up to the tournament. So I was kind of halfway falling asleep at, at several times during the tournament. It's not not something you should ever do. And if I was competing. If I was truly like, you know, um, preparing for a, a, a ranked competition, I, I would have behaved very differently. Um, but right now I'm, 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 uh, I just wanted to show up and be strong, which I feel like I totally accomplished. Um, 
But in my exhausted state, I was like, the guy's like, huh, uh, I'm, I'm like, okay, I guess I'll, I'll show up and, and make sure Jason's words are, are, uh, are, are truthful. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I didn't want the guy to have no one to compete against. And, and this should be about persons. It should be about quality. It should be about backing, putting your money where your mouth is, putting your experience where, where your mouth is, et cetera. Like everything's about showing up and being real. Um, <clears throat> Can Tai Chi stand up against a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu competitor if we play these very specific rules and skill sets? And, um, you know, I, I, of course I beat the guy, you know, <laughs> you know like, but I, but I didn't beat him as fast as I wanted to. And I, even at one point, you know, I jammed my thumb on, on Nick's uh, outfits. Uh, you know, he had one of those traditional Chinese outfits. We're gonna, we're, we're, we're gonna ban those. Like that, <laughs> that is gonna be my in intention to ban those because Nick had to take it off after. Like everyone should be competing in 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 rash guards. Like like if we really want to bridge the communities, put on a rash guard. Like not even a t-shirt. In 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 the Tai Chi World Cup in Taiwan, I had a rash guard on. They wanted me to take that off and put on a, a, a t-shirt. No t-shirts. Like rash guard, rash guard, rash guard, rash guard. Prepare for mixed martial arts. Prepare for people who are going to test you. Prepare for people who don't care that you do Tai Chi. Prepare for them. Because that's the, those are the people that can benefit the most. The people that can benefit from the most from Tai Chi are the people who don't care about Tai Chi. And that's the point of my entire channel. That is the point of the entire channel that, that I have here. And, and it, is, it is to share Tai Chi and, and continue to, to grow the ecosystem for people who, who need it most. And so... If you do Tai Chi and you don't, and you're not aware of the Tai Chi World Cup in Taiwan, you're not aware of push hands, etc. Then make yourself aware by looking at the stuff on my channel, so you can understand, like, oh wow, there's other ways to do this besides the way I'm just being taught, and that does not negate the way I'm being taught. That actually showcases that that these skills can be applied in different ways. So it is still Tai Chi. So for those who don't do Tai Chi at all or who are looking to um, uh, uh, you know, trash talk on what we do. It's like, hey, well, hold on for a second. Come over here and test us. It's a welcome invitation. Put your money where your mouth is. Put your skills where your mouth is. Let's go. And again, we were very successful this past weekend. Very, very successful. So um, like I said, this is a very, uh, a, a very, what would I call it? monumental, historical, wonderful weekend uh, with lots of good people. So if you want to watch it, I'll put the, the little link at the end here, the little link at the end. Uh, if you have any questions about what, what we were doing, what it means, um, and you know, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to think about anything else I could say here. You know, I, I, I want to, um, Like I want to be really clear about what my goals are, what my goals were, what my goals are. And um, yeah, what it means. I feel like there's so, it's so, I, I think a lot of times, and I, and I can understand, I, I want to say this last point. I feel like there's a lot of times with, especially in the martial arts world, especially in Chinese martial arts. Again, I can't speak too much to, I haven't competed in judo. I've trained judo. I haven't, but I've have not competed. I haven't competed in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I've trained it under John Machado, judo under Oishi, um, and you know I've trained Swajiao. So I trained all these other, but I haven't competed in those circuits. So my experience of Tai Chi and Kung Fu is that um, you know you kind of get these broad statement, broad ignorant statements. And that's not to say that, that you don't get that in MMA, et cetera. But I feel like MMA just has um, I, I'm just more going on, <laughs> you know? So like tai chi, tai chi can be very gossipy, et cetera, uh, Kung Fu. And so when, when, you, when we have something like this past weekend, um, I really look at it as, I feel like it's really easy to fall into um, the trap of, of misunderstanding. 
misunderstanding what it means for um, for us to have unlimited weight class, for example. Um, like <clears throat> weight classes are really important in sports. So I think the value with unlimited weight class in Tai Chi is, is saying, okay, cool. Like Josh and Dan, my coaches go into unlimited weight class, beat everybody, beat everybody. And I love that. I think it's super important. And they're, they were, they were absolute, te uh, te te you know, technicians and what they're doing. And, you know, I want to follow in their footsteps, you know, I, in certain ways as well. So it's like, oh man, like, you know, when I lost this past weekend in, in, in what essentially was an, an exhibition and the litmus test. And like I said, the, the, the uh, establishing the pattern of, um, of judges competing. Um, there's part of me that, that didn't feel great. I was like, oh man, like, my coaches, ah, uh, man, like, ah, uh, this is, you know, but then I have to remind myself like, well, hold on for a second. This is like, this is for something very particular. So the mission is accomplished. So I, I want to be really, really transparent with, with my um, uh, perspective here. And my perspective really is you know, I really feel, I don't feel like I do these long pause thinking videos. I feel, I feel really, really good. And I want to make sure that people know that, um, that I have tons of respect for everyone who, who competed, including Nick who won, um, especially his, his skill set, And, um, and that, you know, my intention is to, uh, like I said, keep building out the ecosystem with, with Jason, with, with Nick, and with, with all of you, with all, anyone who wants to compete and, and to support it. Um, and to keep on, to keep on like training, you know, like, like keep on coaching, keep on training. And also like, I will be returning to the competitive circuit. And so it, I think it's really important for folks to, um, for me to clarify that, um, that this past weekend was not me in the competitive circuit. And, and I think that, it, you know, that's one of the misunderstandings I want to really clarify um, is that if I was, if I was training to compete this past weekend, it would be uh, not to say that I would have won. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is that, it, that um, when I am on a, a ranked um, experience uh, going into a circuit and, 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 and it would more than likely be, I would more than likely be doing multiple, like you don't go into a tournament cold um, in, in my experience training tournaments uh, as Josh and Dan taught me. And when that means cold, that means you do warm up tournaments. So in 2010 and in 2004, um, you know, we were doing warm up tournaments. We were, you know, going to the ICMACs and, and going to multiple ICMAC events. And, um, you know, getting into that competitive mindset, competitive mindset, competitive mindset. So I think it's really, really important um, to, to uh, you know, be official with what I'm saying here in that um, the, it, there, there will be a return for me to the competitive sports Tai Chi push hand circuit. It may or may not be with the next team. Um, the next team I'm very interested in coaching. Um, Am I, I, I like I am interested in comp competing, but it really depends on what's going on in my um, my life. And what I mean by that is that you know I'm I'm running this company, I'm running Real World, which I told you about in the beginning, um, and uh, and and producing Justice for Hire. Uh, we are going to be starting live Justice for Hire martial arts events as well. Uh, Jason and I have been talking about this, so I'll let you guys know more about that soon. But if you are not in the cast of the show get ready. It's going to be nuts and, and amazing. Um, but stuff like that is my, is my, like, uh, my main focus. So I want to be able to, like I said, judge an event, show up, test the, uh, test whoever wins, whether they, whether I, like I beat them or they beat me, it's, it's all good. And it's going to be great. And those are essentially exhibitions. Um, and, uh, but when I do make a, a definitive return to competition, it is a definitive return and I will gun for everybody. <laughs> so um, everybody who's between me and that, that uh, Tai Chi World Cup goal that I'm really seeking. And if I do compete on the World Series of Tai Chi push hand circuit, 
Um, that'll be very interesting because I'm one of the, the you know, the, the guys behind it. Uh, so we'll see, maybe I'll play in that too. But, um, you know, my, my intention, my intention really truly is one tournament. And that one tournament is um, the Tai Chi World Cup. I want my, my uh, uh, I want, I want my, I want to go back there and get gold after I lost the uh, gold by one point and got the silver uh, back in 2010. So, and I already have two, two golds from the organization from the previous branding of the organization, which is the Chonghua Cup. Um, from the seventh Chonghua Cup, I came home with two, two gold cups from there. And a lot of our team did, but, um, but to be, uh, to come to, to have that, that 2010 silver, uh, I have to go back and get a gold. So, gotta, and, and then I'll probably, uh, but you know, I never know. Like my father got that, got his, uh, got a bronze at, in 50, at 56 years old. So um, him getting that bronze at 56 um, in Taiwan is massively inspiring. You know, it's, it's, you know, he's, he's out there and he's, 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 he's fighting to win. And, uh, and meddling, and that's a big deal. And a lot of, at an age when a lot of people think that they're too old to do it. And that's why I love looking at my dad, looking at Mickey Rourke, 67 years old, fighting. Um, I was just at uh, Don the Dragon Wilson's gym. Um, shout out, shout out to those guys. Um, I, I just got the business card of the guy who owns the gym. Really sweet, I'm gonna post, I'll post him uh, on my Instagram. Uh, cause we, we, he was really, really a uh, real gentleman, real gentleman. Um, but Don's looking to fight again, Don's 67 and, um, he, you know, they're, they're trying to get Mickey, but they may also do, uh, somebody else. They, like they may do, I think Roy Jones. I don't know. It's like really dope. Um, but I love, I love hearing that, that they're, they're working to get back in the ring and, and they're going to do it. It's freaking awesome. Um, so I do plan to fight MMA, um, you know, I'm, like I said, I am prioritizing when I say fight MMA, I'm really prioritizing, um, what, uh, these live justice for hire martial arts events that I am going to compete in. Like I will have to compete in those, um, as, as one of the characters as well. So, uh, as, as, as a cast member, et cetera. So you'll see what I mean. It's, it's going to be nuts. Um, but that will be, uh, I will, I will enter into MMA for, for that. So we'll, we'll find out when that happens, but Tai Chi push hands as a main focus. Um, I main, I'm mainly focused on coaching the next U S team. Uh, I will build that new U S team by hand. And uh, I, this uh, world series of Tai Chi push hands uh, tournament is going to be the funnel, which that team comes together. So um, the main funnel. So um, I love you guys. And uh, I've spoken long enough uh, for this recap. And if you have any questions, um, I'm happy to answer them. I, I probably should have just done this as a live, ask me anything. Uh, maybe I'll start doing something like that soon. But, um, but I, have, I have responded to everything you guys have asked for in terms of uh, a Tai Chi Patreon. So um, I, I will make the official announcement this week, the official launch this week. And, um, and it really is about making the best, most detailed Tai Chi push hands, sports Tai Chi push hands videos possible. Uh, especially, I mean, Tai Chi push hands in general. Um, there's a lot of different push hands exercises, um, but to actually talk about it, to be able to see and feel, feel through the camera work, how something should feel in your body, that's something that I'm, I'm, I've, I've you know, won a bunch of awards on as an action filmmaker actually. So I want to take that and put that into my Tai Chi videos. But to justify that, um, it's, it's really about, like, I have so many other things to do that if I have patrons saying, hey, you know what, I'm supporting this monthly as like five bucks a month, or maybe I'm coming in at 50 bucks a month, maybe I'm coming in at hundred bucks a month, you know, um, I'm supporting the production of these videos so that, um, the output, these videos that are created, essentially enhances your game, my game, and the entire um, uh, ecosystem of Tai Chi and martial arts. So that, that is my goal with the, the Tai Chi Patreon, Coach Jan Tai Chi Patreon. And you can find it at patreon.com slash Jan's Tai Chi. Of course, you can join the cast of Justice for Hire from justiceforhire.app. 
and become a hero, client, or villain in the show that we are producing. Uh, client hires heroes and villains. Uh, if you want to just learn about it without going to the app right away, you can go to justicefire.com. And you can, of course, invest in the studio, my company, it's Real World, which is all about making movies and shows with communities. You can invest and, and own a part of the studio, the world's first social film studio on wefunder.com slash real world, R-E-E-L-W-U-R-L-D. Again, that's R-E-E-L-W-U-R-L-D. And that is a, uh, you know, we just hit a milestone. We just passed $65,000 uh, and raised so far. So it's really, really great. And we're still on the way to the million and we're gonna hit it. It's gonna be wonderful. Um, and I'm really, really happy uh, to, to be doing this with everybody. And, uh, you know, this, this recap is part of Tai Chi to the People, which is presented by Justice Fire. So the recap is really about uh, letting people know if you're in the Justice Fire community, you normally do my Tai Chi videos. Um, this, this is, this is, there's no training today in this. Uh, it's all about uh, me expressing what happened this past weekend. Um, recapping it and uh, letting you know that this this it's bigger than it's bigger than any one video that I post on here. So there's a lot of stuff going on that, that, I, that I would love for you all to get involved in. So I love you guys. Uh, I'll see you next week, and I'll see you every day on the channel, my Tai Chi YouTube channel, um, YouTube.com/slash/WorldPushHands. Uh, I'll see you every day on there because I have content every day coming out, um, some of which is classic old, some of which uh, I never posted before on this channel. I posted on my personal YouTube page before I was really clarifying, hey, Jan's Tai Chi is over here. And so uh, you'll see some stuff that you may not have seen before that is pretty cool um, that I, I was shocked that's not on, on, on my, um, on this channel. So, um, I, uh, and on the Justice for Hire channel, uh, there's always fun stuff happening there. Uh, I only post these Tai Chi videos once a week on justiceforhire.com. I mean, on, on YouTube's Justice for Hire channel. Um, but there's always something wonderful happening. So I love you guys. And I think the main thing, the main takeaway is thank you to everybody who made that event uh, fantastic. Thank you to uh, RS, uh, R, 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 R Y S K, Risk BJJ, um, for, for hosting us. Uh, and check out. Um, uh, the, the, the wonderful Francisco Lima, um, Professor Francisco Lima at Risk BJJ. He also has an art drawing, an art um, Instagram, Francisco Lima Art, uh, at Francisco Lima Art. And his artwork is stupendous. It is wonderful. So check out his wonderful art as a comic book uh, uh, fan and as someone who grew up in the comic book industry and someone who publishes comic books as well. I'm always looking for artists and talent. And like I said, across all my life. And so when I saw him, I was like, this guy's, this guy's actually real talent. And so, uh, you know, he's, he takes his skill set of the martial arts and his attention and detail and his, his patience, et cetera. And he puts it into his art. So I can't say enough good about him. I really liked him. He's got action figures everywhere. I mean, my son, I'm looking at his action figures. Um, he had the uh, Dark Knight's Metal, uh, Batman Doomsday, really cool, really cool stuff. So anyway, um, have a great day reach out, shout out to everybody, and I love you.